Hi, I'm Mike, independent camera repair technician, and I'm starting fixyourcamera.org to show you the photo gear industry from a different point of view. No specs, no marketing BS, talking about things you won't hear anywhere else. Welcome. Most DSLR problems are easy to fix. Disassembling it carefully and putting it back together without causing any damage is a different story. But finding a problem and fixing it, once you know how a DSLR works internally, is usually not a big deal. There is that tough one, however, that comes in from time to time and leaves me completely puzzled. And this happens to every camera repair tech. To solve many of these tough problems, I use a very simple test, which I'm going to show you now. Every DSLR and most other devices are using a DC to DC converter. It's basically a power supply. And within that power supply, there is a power management chip, which is driving several simple circuits called buck and boost converters. This is because a typical camera requires several different voltages that are lower and some that are higher than the main battery voltage. The most important thing about a DC-DC converter is that it's extremely power efficient. It only takes power from the battery if there is something connected to it and turned on on the other side. So, simply by tapping into one of the battery wires, it's easy to check a lot of different things within a DSLR that would otherwise take a lot of disassembling, testing and frustration, since these are quite complex devices. There are several ways of measuring current. This time I'm using a battery. It's from a different model, but I know it works with this one too. It has two thin pieces of copper with some plastic between them attached to it. And there are two wires connected so that I can plug them into my meter. Some other ways to do this are, for example, dummy batteries. This is basically an empty battery plastic shell with wires sticking out so I can connect them to a power supply. Or, my favorite way, a battery grip connected to a nice precision power supply. Repair shops usually have many of these tools ready to use for many different models, which makes this part of my job easy and fast. Still, sometimes it's necessary to open up the camera and cut into the positive wire inside, which is my least favorite way of doing this. Obviously, time consuming. Basically, any way you can find to plug your meter between your camera and the battery is good, without destroying anything, of course. With these test batteries, I usually try to make sure that they are fully charged before starting any measurements, because Ohm's law comes into play here. Okay, I'm going to put a piece of Kapton tape to secure these wires and we can start. The first test I always do is with the camera turned off. Now, this camera is working perfectly fine, but let's assume for a minute that there is nothing displayed on both LCDs and it's acting in some weird way. This meter always defaults to AC current, so I always have to remember to switch it to DC, which is annoying. So let's switch to DC and start with microamps. While turned off, without any accessories, without the card or anything else connected to it, it takes about 115 microamps. The exact value is not that important here. Below 200 microamps is usually fine. At this point, I note that the main fuse is fine and there is no open circuit before the DC-DC converter because it is taking some power and that there is no short to ground, otherwise it would show much higher value like, for example, 20 or 50 milliamps or possibly more, which would indicate some liquid damage or some other problems. Next, while still turned off, I play with the buttons. Different brands and different models react in a different way here, so, or don't react at all to buttons pressed while turned off. So this part is not that important, but still, it's well worth it to gather as much information as possible. It can be very useful in some cases. Shutter button, half pressed, it goes to about 290 microamps. This is important. Now I know several more things. At least some part of the DC to DC converter is working. The microcontroller is working, or at least to some extent, because there is a reaction and the pre-release contacts of the shutter button are not shorted. This is common and it might cause some weird behavior like no reaction to other buttons or no display on the rear LCD and some other. Let's check some other buttons. This one is about 140. 
So within the top cover 140 and all of them within the back cover are about 300. The multi selector causes no change which is fine. There is a reaction to the command dial. I'm turning it slowly otherwise it's hard to see any change. Mode dial doesn't cause any change and that's normal here. Ok so let's move on to the next part. This one is very important and applies to all cameras. Switching to milliampers and we'll check if there is a reaction to the power switch and what kind of reaction. It immediately goes to about 180 milliamps and after a couple of seconds it goes back to standby mode. This is good. So I know that the power switch is working properly. This is also a common problem for all DSLRs or most of them and often requires some cleaning. The microcontroller is working and the camera goes into the standby mode. Nothing prevents it from doing so. Now if there is no reaction to the power switch it could be because of the power switch itself and also it could indicate that some microcontroller problems, possibly some liquid damage or some other things. Also it could mean that something is shorted on the other side of the DC-DC converter. In this case that black bar on the bottom of my multimeter LCD would blink quickly. In such case I would be looking for bad shorted motors or a blown motor driver that is usually short to ground. What happens in this case is the power management chip turns the power on, detects a short and shuts down the power immediately. So there is a quick blink and then nothing happens. And this black bar on the bottom of my meter simply reacts faster than the digital display so that's why it's visible here. Although in some cases it's still too slow so I have to try several times and that usually works. Let's test the SD card now and by the way I'll show you how this quick blink looks like. Insert the SD card and watch this black bar. In case of power problems it usually shows up and disappears much faster than this. Some cheap multimeters often have some kind of a fast reaction feature so you don't necessarily have to spend a lot of money. On the other hand even if you buy the best and the most expensive one this feature is not 100% reliable so still it's sometimes necessary to use some other tools like an oscilloscope or skip this step and try something else. That's what I usually do simply because it's faster. The SD card test is also very useful. 180 milliamps in this case and then goes to standby mode. It indicates that the switch within the SD card slot is working. So I know even without both displays that there is power going to the digital board, the larger one on the back usually, and there is a reaction from the processor. So it's most likely working too. If possible I also try to format an SD card. Not my customer's card of course. On some cameras it's possible to do it by pressing and holding two buttons and it also shows up as a higher current and gives me even more confidence that the processor is working fine. Next is the backlight and rear LCD. Weird things here often show up in case of liquid damage. Lens attachment. Problems with communication between the camera and the lens are also quite common. This is a very good starting point to check if there is any reaction. 180 here and standby. Also a very good test if I'm working on a lens that has some strange problems so I can check what it does while focusing, VR or image stabilization, Cylon wave motor or ultrasonic motor etc. Let's see what happens when I take a picture with this camera. The maximum is almost 2 amps, up to 2 amps while taking a picture. Flash circuit. Let's quickly remove this tape and some covers and measure this part. Be very careful here. There is high voltage on the flash capacitor inside and it can be dangerous both to you and to the camera itself. I make sure that the manual mode is set and let's test the flash cover switch first. Again, be careful not to touch the capacitor or anything else. There is a small switch located close to the flash hinge that signals to the flash circuit to start charging the main capacitor when you open up the flash. Discharge. Discharge. 
OK, and it's charging for a couple of seconds, and then it stops. The current consumption goes up to 1.8 amps during this process. It's important that it both. It starts charging when the flash is opened. This shows that the switch is working and the capacitor charging circuit is working. Also, it's important that it stops charging. It means that there is high enough voltage on the flash capacitor detected. For example, in case of a leaking capacitor, it's going to take a significant amount of time or it will never happen. The camera is going to keep draining the battery for some time. In such case, I always measure the voltage on this capacitor. Notice isolated tips. And it should be about 300 and dropping slowly over time. This is normal. If it's dropping much faster, then something is definitely wrong. Please remember to switch your meter and wires from measuring current to measuring voltage. Otherwise, you know what will happen. There is 300 volts here. So if you don't feel confident doing this, please don't. Current measurement from the battery is quite safe. Flash circuit is not. So feel free to skip this part. In case of flash problems, I also measure the capacitance and sometimes check the ESR of this capacitor. Of course, after making sure five times that it's fully discharged. And then measure the IGBT transistor looking for shorts and, you know, all the usual stuff. There are many more things you can test this way depending on the particular situation. Anyway, in just a couple of minutes and by using a simple multimeter, we can know a lot what's going on within a typical DSLR. Lots of very difficult to solve problems can be detected right here quickly. Just imagine if I had to disassemble this camera, check for a single problem, put it back together, test if it works, then disassemble it again, check for another problem, put it back together and so on. It would most likely take me several hours to do it. Oh, and if you'll be looking for problems within your own camera, please start with very simple things. You can spend days thinking about digital image signal processing and some electromagnetic interference coming from somewhere causing errors or some other weird things. I can tell you right away that it's most likely some silly stupid thing that doesn't require much thinking at all. For example, it could be one of the buttons on the back is stuck or is shorted because a couple of drops of liquid got in there or the power switch is not working properly. Maybe one of the screws got loose and is rattling inside causing shorts or one of the motors stopped working, something got stuck or some mechanical part broke. Easily over 90% of repairs I do are like this. No science involved whatsoever. I do this current measurement test quite often on cameras and lenses and I'm thinking now it's just amazing how much time I was able to save over the years just by connecting two wires to a meter or to a power supply. Very powerful stuff. Of course, it's not going to solve all of your problems, but it's definitely a great starting point. I hope this was helpful. Subscribe if you wish. Don't destroy stuff. And I'll see you next time. Bye.